I'm Emilio Pazmino, and this is a Titus Scorpion. Today we're out here in the highlands of Ecuador, near the capital city of Quito. And at 3,000 meters above sea level, you would expect to find not many insects or other invertebrates. That's not at all the case. If you look around in gardens like this one, you're going to find all sorts of creepy crawlies, like this scorpion. Ecuador has a very large diversity of scorpions, and new species are either being discovered or reclassified constantly. So I'm not exactly sure what species I have on my hand right now. But based on its appearance, I think it might belong to the genus Titus. This genus is composed of over 200 species of scorpions found throughout the Neotropics. They usually have very thick tails, and some of them have very potent venom. One species, called the Brazilian yellow scorpion, is thought to have stung hundreds of thousands of people in the last 20 years, and has killed around 700. To be fair though, most of the victims were young children and the elderly. And even among them, the mortality rate is in between 1 to 2 percent. Given how dangerous this species might be, you guys are probably wondering why I'm handling it. Well, as we proved last time with the Central American bark scorpion, scorpions are only going to sting if you put pressure on them. So if I just gently let him walk around my hand and around my arms, it's not going to sting me. This way provides much less stress for the scorpion than, let's say, by grabbing it by the tail which would be the alternative method to catching a scorpion. There is a widespread myth that says if you create a ring of fire around a scorpion, it'll commit suicide as it sees no way out. While it's pretty interesting, this is actually wrong for a couple reasons. First of all, scorpions don't have a concept of death, so they don't know that they're committing suicide. Second of all, the stinger of a scorpion cannot penetrate its own exoskeleton. And even if it could, scorpions are immune to their own venom. But then why do some people claim that they've seen it happen? Well, this is because scorpions are exothermic creatures, which means that they get heat from their environment. So when they're surrounded by fire, their body temperature rises way too much, and it causes them to have body spasms. So it makes it look like they're stinging themselves. I actually have two scorpions with me today, and they seem to be the same species. In most scorpions, the females are going to be thicker than the males. So I think this might be a mating couple. However, we can't keep these guys close for too long because scorpions are very territorial and will fight with each other if they meet. And in some cases, they'll even eat each other. So here's a question I get pretty often. Who do we win in a fight? A spider or a scorpion? Well, here in a basement in Quito, you see we got some spiders. Oh, out of focus. There we go, we got some spiders. See those spider eggs? And we've also got scorpions in here. Now I want to show you what happens. There are four scorpions living in this basement and you see one dead. There we got two also dead. Now this guy over here is completely mummified. Look at that. And here we've got our lone survivor scorpion. Out of the four that I saw here originally, three have been killed by spiders. Funny thing is, I don't see a single dead spider. Of course, it's going to depend for every species and location in the fight of spider versus scorpion. But in this specific circumstance, here in Quito, the spider wins. I'm going to go put these scorpions back where I found them. Bueno, muchachos. Till next time. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and comment down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe so you don't miss out on any new adventures by clicking the channel icon right above or click here to watch another video. And as always, thanks for watching.